In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make API calls using Node-RED, using the HTTP request node. I'm going to go through two examples. I'm going to show you how to retrieve Formula One driver standings. And then in the second example, I'm going to show you how to connect to the SwitchBot API. In the first example, we're going to be calling a free to use Formula One API. We're going to be getting driver standings, but there's also other information available. So let's dive in. All right, so now that we're in Node-RED, let's filter by HTTP. And you can see here, this bottom one is the node that we're interested in. So the first two, HTTP in and HTTP response, is if you're actually going to create a web server where things externally can send requests to Node-RED and then Node-RED can respond. Whereas for this video, we're actually going to send web requests out to the internet and get a response back. So that's this node here. So we can drag this onto the palette. So if you double click into the node, then we can see all the options available. So you can see that you can do HTTPS requests, which most requests these days should be that, especially if it's an API call. You can do authentication. So you can do some basic mechanisms like basic auth, digest and bearer. But if you need to do anything more complicated, which I'll show you in this video, then you need to do some separate custom functions and pass that in separately. I'm not entirely sure what enable connection keep live does, to be honest. Use proxy means that you can go through a proxy server. So that's usually if you've got a more complex internet setup. So like for businesses, they would have a proxy in the middle. Being at home, you probably don't have a proxy in place. The next one is interesting. So basically responses that are 200 or 201s, etc., usually means that it's a successful request. Whereas if you get a response back that's not a 200, then it's probably a bad request, for, for example, a 400. So if you get a bad request back, then it will go to a catch node and then you can do something with that error. Likewise, I'm not sure what disable strict HTTP parsing is. If we look over to the right here, you can see that it does have a lot of information about what you can do in the node. So these are all the inputs you can have. So the inputs are basically nodes that come before this one. You can pass in certain variables as an input. Scrolling down here, we can see the outputs. So this is basically what is actually returned back from the server that you made the request to. So the response headers and the response body, the payload, which is the most important thing generally. The response URL response cookies and a redirect list. So generally, you're just going to be interested in the payload that is returned and probably the status code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install a new palette and this allows you to store credentials securely within Node-RED. So if we go up to the hamburger menu, manage palette, and then we can do install. And then if we search for this, Node-RED contrib credentials, then you can see here it says it allows you to store credentials. So let's press install. And there we go, it's installed. Now searching by credentials, you can see there's this here. And if we double click in here, you can see that you can add credential values. So this is the private value. And then this here is where it goes in the message. We'll have a look at this node in a bit more detail later on. Okay, so back to the HTTP request node. So for our first example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve the driver standings for the Formula One Championship. This is an unauthenticated API that's available for free online. So let's take a look. So here's the website and you can see it's fairly basic, but if I search for JSON, then it tells us here that any of the URLs it gives, if you append .json to the end, then it should return some JSON. So let's have a look. So we're going to go to standings and you can see here driver standings. So if we press this, then you can see it returns it in a HTML page. But if we add to the end of this dot JSON, then it should return it in JSON. And there we go. So this is what we want to call in Node-RED. So let's copy this URL and then go back to Node-RED. So if we double click into this node and you can see this URL here, we can simply paste the URL into there and then we can see it's a GET request which is what we want because we're not sending any data. Simply press DONE and now we're going to take an INJECT node so that we can trigger this. Let's put this here and link it up and then we're going to take a DEBUG node so that we can see what the output is. So DEBUG 
like that to that. I'm going to double click into this debug node and click here and do complete message so we can see everything that's returned. If you leave it as it is, like this message.payload, then it will show you the response of the message that we saw over here, so this. But it won't show you things like HTTP response codes. Whereas if we do this, complete message. Now let's give it a go. So we're going to deploy this. Go to the debug tab here on the right hand side. And now we press this button here. There we go, that was super quick. Let's expand it out. So you can see, payload, that's got all the data. Status code 200 here, so this is what we want to check to make sure that the request is actually being successful. And then this has got some header information as well, which you're probably not interested in, but you might need under certain circumstances. So the first thing I notice here is that this is a JSON message but this actually isn't expandable, it's just as text. So what we want to do is we want to have this in JSON so we can actually manipulate this data. So I'm going to add a new node so that we can convert that. So I've just searched for a JSON node here and we're going to add it between the debug node and the request. So if we just drag it and put it over there, it automatically puts it in between. Double click. And then you can see convert between JSON string and object. So it will figure it out for you basically on this setting. And then message.payload, that is actually what we want to convert. So that's okay as well. So let's click done. Deploy. Let's minimize that message. Press it again. And now let's see what's happened. Payload. And here you go. You can see now you've got a JSON structure. So you've got this MR data. And then within that, you've got more information. So we can see all the information here. I've actually called 2008 season, which is not ideal. So let's change that to this year. So what we want to do is we want to take this URL instead. So now we've ended up with this URL .json. Let's see what that does. I'm going to remove this, deploy, and let's try again. Okay, so this looks better. So season 2023. And we should see Max Verstappen at the top of the driver standing. So let's see if that is the case. And there we go. It shows his permanent number. It shows that he's the first object in the array. So he's first. And it gives quite a bit of information about him, actually. So now we can do whatever we want with this data. So let's just say that we wanted the number of points that the person's got. So we can then press this button here, which gets the path of that JSON. So loading this up in Notepad, we can see that it shows payload.mrdata.standingstable.blah.blah.blah.blah. So that is the path within the JSON to get that specific piece of data. So I think the next logical thing to do now is to catch an error scenario. So if the API call fails for some reason, what do we do? So let's scroll down on here and you see there's a catch node here. Let's go back into this HTTP request and we can tick only send non 200 responses to the catch node and then drag a debug node again i'm going to rename this and say there was an error double click into here and then instead of all nodes we can do selected nodes so you see there's http request node so let's press that so if there's an error then it should come to this debug node here. So let's run that. Let's deploy. And you can see, it's just returned a message from here, nowhere from here, because it was a status code 200. So to make an error, let's go into here, and let's just an add another M to the end of this URL. Hopefully that'll come up with an error. Deploy. Here we go. We can see there was an error. So you can see that this here, it has not found the URL. And so it's returned an error through to this catch node and it's caught that error. At the moment here, it's just returning the timestamp, but at least you know that you need to resend that request because it's failed for some reason or another. So if we were doing this properly, we would probably want to combine this catch node with something like the counter node. So if we had a counter, then we could get it to retry so many times before stopping. And we might want to use something like the delay node where we can do rate limiting. So if you go into this node, then you can do rate limit and you can say how many message you want to send per period. And then you can also drop messages in between. So you could say only retry 
within a 10 second period or something like that. I'm not going to show you exactly how to set this up here because I want to go through some more API examples instead. So in this example, we're going to be calling the SwitchBot API. If you don't know what SwitchBot is, they're a company that makes a lot of home automation products. So they do things like smart locks, smart blind controllers, and much more. So they've got an API available. The API isn't local, it's a cloud-based API, unfortunately, but you can use it to retrieve information about your devices and also control them. So in this example, we're going to just get the list of devices, but you can also control them like unlocking or locking your front door. So let's take a look. Okay, so now we're back into Node-RED, let's do plus and add a new flow, double click it and we'll call it SwitchBot. So the first thing we're going to do is add an inject node so that we can actually trigger this. The next node we want is a function node, which is going to be doing a lot of the hard work. And what we also want to do here is we want to create a unique identifier for every API request. So to do that, we're going to need to add another new palette. So go into the hamburger menu again, manage palette, install, and this time we're going to install random generator node red contrib. Install. There we go, it shows you which new palettes are available. So UUID is the node that we want. So let's drag that on. And if you double click into this, you can see there's nothing available as an option. It will simply generate a new GUID for you every time it runs through this node. So the next node we're going to want is the debug node again to see what the response is. So we can link all these up. So we need to, of course, add in the HTTP request node as well. So let's drag that and add it here. So basically from left to right, we are going to call it by pressing this button. Obviously, normally you'd get it to do it on a schedule or something like that. Uh, UUID, it will generate and it will store it in message.payload. The function node we're going to use to generate the header, which is going to be used for authentication to call the SwitchBot API. HTTP request is going to do that actual request to the SwitchBot API. And then the debug node is going to give us the results so we can see if it was successful or not. So opening up the function node, there's a couple of things we need to do first. So we need to go to setup first, and then we need to go to add here, and we need to add a module called crypto which is a cryptographic function. And then what this means is we actually call it with the variable crypto. So let's go to on message, and this is where we need to put all the code. So I'm going to paste the code in, and I'll have that in the description. So walking through this, we can see the first thing it does is it generates the current date into a variable T. We then have the nonce, which is the UUID from here. So we've got message.payload, saving it as that. And then data, is the token, which is basically part of our API credentials. We've got T, that, and then we've got that. So that's the format it needs to be in for the SwitchBot API. This varies per API. You've got to look at their documentation and see what you need to do. So now we've got here, we've got creating this HMAC. So we've got a HMAC function, which is in this crypto that we set up. And then we need to pass in the secret. So the token and the secret are the things that we need to pass in, which are our credentials. So we haven't done that yet. And then it changes it to UTF-8 and then does a digest. And then it gets base64 encoded and then gets finally added to the header. So the missing part of the jigsaw here is the token and the secret. So to add that, we're going to use the palette that we added earlier. So credentials, let's drag that on. So what we want to do here is, is we want to add this to the flow. So clicking back into this function node, we've called it token and secret. So that's what we want to call it in here. So double click this, and then let's do add, and message.token is one of them. Add again, message.secret. So then we need to add the credentials in here, and then hopefully we should be good to go to use them in here. So now that I've added the credentials into here, we need to go back into the function node and make sure we actually use them. Right, so I've added these two lines now, which will pull out the token and secret from the message. So now we need to go into this HTTP request node and actually add the URL. So this is a GET request. It's a secure connection, so we need to make sure that we've got that. So we need to add a secure connection so we don't really need to do anything here. We just leave it all as it is and press add. Press done, let's press deploy. Now let's run it and see what happens. And there we go. We can see that we've actually got a successful result back from the SwitchBot API. It's listing all of my devices here. 
I've obviously had to blur a lot of it out, unfortunately, but trust me, it's showing the right information. So just like in the first example, we need to actually convert this string into a JSON message. So we use this JSON node again, and we can drag that in and add it to here. So doing that again, you can see now that it's in a proper structured message. You've got a status code of 100, and you've got a success as the message, and then the body is here. Now it's got the list of devices, the three devices, and then you can expand these out. In my case, you can see here that I've got a hub mini, I've got a front door keypad and a front door smart lock. So hopefully these couple of examples have helped you get started on calling APIs to get the information you need. Every API is different in some shape or form, so you're going to need to probably experiment a bit yourself. There's different types of authentication, different messages. Some use JSON, some use XML, but hopefully this has given you a good foundation to get started. And leave comments below if you've got any questions. Well, that's it for today. So thanks until next time. <laughs>